Good morning, everyone. My name is Iha Farid, and today I'm joined by my colleagues Ahmed Abu Ahmed, Ahmed Lathi, and Yusuf Ura. And uh, today we're going to be presenting to you our final demo, which is uh, titled Testbot. Okay, so this is an outline of what we're going to be going through our presentation, and we're going to be detailing every section as we go along. So for the first section, the problem, uh, we define it as to develop a generic AI agent that plays and learns specifically 3D platformer games through reinforcement learning for testing purposes in Unity. Uh, our main aim was basically that we wanted to uh, develop uh, a generic AI agent that was that is able to generalize relatively well on different levels or games within the 3D platformer genre. And the main method that we we're going to be using was reinforcement learning. And this would basically be used by developers for testing purposes uh, in the Unity engine. Um, now we will talk about the motivation for our thesis. Um, with our experience in game development, we are aware of some, some of the uh, common problems of game development. One of the biggest is uh, catching bugs, which can be, in certain cases, game-breaking with severe financial losses. Uh, uh, our thesis uh, project is intended to help with that, since the current solution is QA testing. And uh, uh, later, we're going to discuss about how expensive it can be to resolve such bugs in game development. Another challenge that we want to address is uh, and is like a motivation for our project is exploit of hidden game mechanics uh, in this image specifically you can see one character is not uh, intended to, st to stand on one block but uh, he, ca he can due to a hidden exploit and in this case it can ruin the game experience for other users and our product helps with detecting such behaviors before the game is released and it should help around the launch in summary, the motivation for our project helps us with the following, helping developers test their games and levels, automatically report detected bugs, and observe the model's adaptation to the game development environment. So now we will discuss some of the alternative solutions uh, that we found in the literature. The first one is titled the automated playtesting of a 2D platformer. And here they take a similar approach to what we're doing where they use reinforcement learning and curriculum learning, which we will be discussing in more detail later. And they also use the Unity ML Agents framework for training their uh, the game, uh, the model in the game. Uh, however, we noticed that in this paper, they're training their model to sp specifically play this game within the 2D platformer genre, which is different to what we're doing. Uh, and then this second paper is titled Mar.io, and here they use a different structure where they use genetic algorithms to build a network for each level, which is, means that they're not intending on generalizing between different levels, and it, this, this model can only play Mario levels that are designed, designed using a specific engine. Since our other papers weren't aiming to detect bugs in their games, we were looking at some other bug detection techniques that are used in the literature, and we found the following three papers, and we noticed we were looking at the kind of uh, evaluation metrics that they were using, and we noticed that they were using recall and precision as the main metrics for testing the performance of their tools, um, and we chose to rely mainly on recall as the main metric, and recall is basically defined as the percentage of true positives from the total number of positives, which in our case is the percentage of bugs that our model would be able to find within a specific level or a specific game. Next, we want to address our ap approach for developing our product. We use the ML, uh, ML Agents framework uh, as our main structure to build our project on, which is basically an open source uh, framework uh, developed by, by Unity and can be integrated into the Unity game engine. Uh, it's open source, so we can make our own cha uh, changes, which we did. Uh, and it offers uh, learn uh, machine learning, learning algorithms like PPO and SAC. And the, the purpose of it is that you would integrate it, train the model on it, and, and be able to capture data and output from it. Uh, our approach was uh, that we would find the open source games and we would uh, develop levels for them. And based on that, we're going to train our models uh, on them. Uh, for that, we found three open source games, and for each one of them, we developed a few levels. For the first one, nine levels, and second one, eight, and the third one, six levels. What, what these games sh uh, share are a few similarities uh, that we want to point out is that uh, they all have a starting point for the level, they all have a goal, and sometimes they can have like secondary objectives, uh, like collecting coins or avoiding enemies. Uh, and these similarities are specifically the main characteristic of our uh, genre of focus, which is 3D platformers. Then what we did was that we found another open source game, uh, which is a blind game for us. The blind game is, uh, serves our purpose of testing. So the idea is we would train the model on the other games, then we would try to integrate it into this game and see how it behaves. And, be and based on that, we develop our, our metrics for how each agent is behaving. Is it better or worse than the previous one? Uh, finally, what ML Agent offered, offered us is uh, a way that uh, the agent can sense the environment around it. And 
what how it does that uh, is that it would use sensors uh, as you can see in the left image the sensors help him navigate through the environment by giving him a few pieces of information uh, so the idea is it would offer him horizontal sensors and these give him specific information like the tag which identifies which object uh, the sensor is hitting and the distance between them so uh, as you can see on collision it can uh, uh, in the left image you can see a, f a red sphere which identifies that such information has been like observed already so since ml agents only offers us the horizontal sensors what we try to do is that we would implement the vertical sensors and these help specifically with 3d platformers because our goal is to reach a goal and the obstacles in in the level can be uh, holes or the need to make a jump or or uh, both of them in the same level so when we combine both of them the vertical and horizontal sensor sensors we give enough information for the bot to be able to reach its destination and finish the objective another feature we implemented early on was the agent input class uh, which is a class that we wrote in order to abstract the process of taking the input uh, and this can be either from the user or from the model um, this this class would also allow the user to easily define any rewards or punishments that they wish to add uh, for example, uh, gaining a reward based on coin collection or being punished for taking too long to finish the level. Um, one, of, one of the problems that we kept facing was catastrophic forgetting, uh, which is the problem of the model forgetting previous levels it trained on uh, when it is being trained on newer levels. And then uh, two methods that we found to solve this problem were curriculum learning and utilizing the algorithm soft actor critic, which, which, is, which is SAC. Um, Curriculum learning is basically where the model trains on levels of increasing difficulty or complexity, as you can see here on the right. Um, as for SAC, um, uh, th this resulted in extremely good results because it has an inherent curiosity module uh, and it also utilizes stochastic policies. Uh, and both of these characteristics are actually very useful for environment exploration uh, as the model uh, consistently tries to uh, attempt different things in the environment. Uh, in order to assess the model's performance, we use TensorBoard, uh, which allows us to look at graphs detailing the rewards obtained by the model uh, and the different levels the model was able to beat, as you can see here in the two pictures shown, among other um, things. As for the final architecture that we adopted, uh, we decided to go with what we call the master brain architecture. Uh, this is basically a mixture of experts approach where we train multiple brains on different tasks or levels or games, each becoming an expert in a certain thing. Uh, and then we train a master brain to utilize these uh, trained models in solving new levels. We can have a closer look uh, at the diagram uh, where we have, uh, as you can see here on the left, multiple pre-trained brains. Uh, and the master brain is essentially trained to act as the selection line of this multiplexer, where it decides which model is best to use in a certain state. Uh, after obtaining this decision to be taken, it is then passed down to the bot and the action is performed, resulting in a change in the environment. This new state is then passed on to the master brain and the process is repeated. Uh, we found this architecture to perform uh, way better compared to other uh, methods because it allows for a, a variety of different models to be used together, as well as dealing with the catastrophic forgetting problem that uh, I mentioned earlier. And then we'll present our results in the coming section. So as for our results, we first started by evaluating each model visually. Um, here are some of the models that we independently train on the different levels. Uh, so on the top right, this model was trained specifically for the second game, and on the bottom right, this model trained specifically for that game. On the top left was the end product of our thesis one uh, segment of the project, where we uh, produced this uh, relatively well-generalized model, but it was very stuttery, and as you can see, it's kind of slow, and we tried to solve these problems using the method that I mentioned before. Uh, so on the next slide, we will see the master architecture. Um, which performs significantly better on uh, this blind level that it had never seen before. Um, and as you can see, like it, uh, it moves smoothly and uh, is able to actually beat the level in slightly different ways, um, which is good for, the, for our goal of bug detection as variety in action is good for us because it allows it to explore different parts of the level, thus making it more likely to encounter different bugs that are present in different areas. Uh, finally, we come to the last part of our approach, which is related to basically uh actually making the bot do what it's meant to do. As we mentioned at the top of the presentation, our bot is meant to help with, with testing and detect bugs. It's not just meant to beat the level. 
So how uh, so we we were led to uh, developing a, a way to quantitatively evaluate how well each uh, one of our models was doing this goal or like how well it was detecting bugs. We could qualitatively show, uh, as in this video, uh, that a model was detecting bugs. As as you can see in this video, for example, uh, the, mo the, the model was just jumping to the goal directly instead of actually playing the level because the goal was placed too low. So that's like one of the exploits that we mentioned at the beginning of the presentation. Uh, so what we wanted to do was make um, this metric and evaluate uh, how well each model was so that we can compare the models uh, qu uh, quantitatively rather than qualitatively. Uh, and use that to uh, select a model to ship with our product. So the one of the oh, the main feature actually of our uh, of our bot will, is that uh, it will be able to automatically detect a certain bugs that uh, it uh, it finds throughout levels and uh, log them so that the developer can then uh, see the bugs and then the developer would be able to maybe add them to their own planning software or bug logging software so that they can be fixed later on by uh, by the developers so how how it works is basically um, it, it's a it's like a bug detector component that is add, attached to the object or the object that holds the model on it or holds the test bot on it uh, and essentially it um, just has uh, sets of rules that uh, like dictate common bugs such as falling through objects or uh, maybe hitting a finish line that doesn't actually end the level things like that and then it would be able to uh, uh, like detect these uh, bugs and generate a log entry that can be placed in a log later on uh, that we will show so basically to 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 actually perform the tests and uh, get like this quali uh, quantitative measure we developed bugged levels for each of our games as you can see with like the different colored blocks these blocks uh, to the bot itself would be the same as any other block uh, but to us they basically would count as a bug like hitting them would be entered into the log as a bug because for example you can pass through them or things like that uh, so essentially, <clears throat> uh, the the bot the bot would play through these levels and explore them. So the better the bot the bot is at exploring, it would hit more bugs. Uh, and as you can see in this log, this is a log generated by playing through uh, one of the levels. And an entry in the log basically says what type of uh, bug it potentially detected, and what what the name of the object that it inter interacted with when it uh, logged this bug and the exact global position of that object. Uh, such a log entry would, would very easily allow the, the developer to reproduce the bug as he would have our, all the relevant information. So in, in order to evaluate our best model, what we did is we let, uh, we let TestBot play uh, 25 episodes in each level, and we logged the number of bugs that it was able to collect. Um, and then we in this graph, we show uh, the total recall of the bug in per game in the first three games, which it uh, were used for testing and development, uh, and then the blind game as well that had never seen before, and we see that it was able to perform uh, pretty well uh, across all four games, reaching an e a recall of about eighty uh, percent. And then, in case you you would like to see how well it compared it performed compared to the other models, um, this is an example of it being compared to some of the previous models that we uh, had developed in the past. And as you can see, the modeling gray, the master models, it was able to generalize much better on the other games, um, which is part of why uh, this is this architecture is very useful for our purpose. So let's talk about the, our empowerment outcome and the product that we are aiming to back. There are three parts to our product. The first part is the generalized model, which is the model that we just talked about, the master brain. And this will be shipped with our product in case any developer would like to use the model out of the box to test his or her game. Uh, easily without going through the process of training. And we tested our, this model on the blind game. Uh, this is the blind game that we talked about earlier, and this is a level that is relatively complicated. And as you can see in the picture on the left, uh, there's a circle here, which is basically like a bouncing trampoline. If the player reaches it, it will bounce, which is a new mechanic that the model had never reached before. But as you can see on the video right now, it's actually using this trampoline uh, and is actually able to use it to, to beat the level, which is something that never had seen before which is a, a, a sign of the fact that it was able to generalize relatively well. But it's also able to beat the level by just simply climbing up the stairs, which is another good feature of the model because it's able to just explore the space and trying to find different ways to beat the level. <clears throat> so the second part of our empowerment outcome is the Unity package that we will ship with our product. Uh, so basically, a Unity package just wraps up uh, a bunch of scripts and objects, and we 
developers would then be able to import that into their own projects so they can use it. We've prepared, we've prepared a short video to show you that will describe basically how this package uh, functions. So when it comes to using the package, all that is required is that you have Unity ML Agents installed and you uh, essentially download our package. You can then go to Assets, Import Package, Custom Package, and then choose the package that was downloaded. It will then show you the list of things that will be added to the project and you can just check whatever you want and then import. The testbot folder shows up and now I can go to my player which doesn't have any model on it or any script other than like the controls on it. I can then just drag and drop testbot onto it and it automatically adds any other scripts that it needs such as the sensors and all of that. Um, <coughs> I can then go to my presets which are provided in the package. Uh, I want to test the upside model which uh, was trained on the third game which we've described before. All I have to do is drag and drop the settings which as you can see here define th things like the sensor and all of that. Uh, once I drag and drop it uh, I can also set the brain type to settings so that it uh, imports the model from the one referenced in the settings. And uh, once I press play it will automatically adjust uh, all the settings and sensors and all of that to match the loaded model. Um, as you can see here, it automatically um, ch adjusted it to follow the vertical sensors as set uh, before, as we showed uh, previously. Uh, it also sets the horizontal sensors as well to fit w what we described before. Uh, and as you can see here, it has loaded the upside model, which is the one trained on the uh, third game. Uh, it also adds the specified objects that are used for the bug detection, the automatic bug detection that we have also described before. All this is added automatically. All, all that the user needs to do is just add the script and set the settings. Uh, and as you can see, it's playing the game normally. And this is a model that was actually trained on the third game and it's actually just playing the second game uh, very normally. So as you can see, the process is very simple and uh, it, it should be very helpful for developers uh, who want to, to just test uh, their levels and games using the models we provided. Uh, and we'll actually talk about how they can train their own models next. And these models can then be integrated right into this uh, framework and used directly just by creating their own settings for it, like here, uh, setting the settings and then just importing the model that they trained as we will show uh, in the next slide. So because ML agents can sometimes be difficult to use and it's often difficult to keep track of all your training sessions as well as the required configuration for each sessions, we created this UI to allow the developers to keep track of their sessions and create new ones easily. Uh, which is going to be useful for using Dustbot in case they want to train their own models. So there's two sections. There's the individual brain section on the left and the master brain on the right. You would use individual brains if you wish to train a single brain on a single environment, which is the most common use case. If I click on the new session button, it, you will see this part of the interface, which is dedicated to training a new session and choosing all the options. The first drop-down menu allows you to choose uh, the specific configuration file, which defines the kind of training, as well as the neural network itself. And the, the package will come with our own config files that uh, worked best for us, but the developer is free to add his own if he wishes to. And then the second drop-down menu allows you to choose from the executables, which are linked through shortcuts that are present in this executables folder. And this basically allows the developer to make his own builds and train on whatever executable file or whatever game they have developed for themselves for the, for the purpose of testing. And then we have to choose the number of concurrent environments and a unique run ID, which are required by ML agents. And then we can choose to resume or force this run if force replacing a previous run if there's a previous run that uses the same ID, uh, which is also an option provided by emanations. And then after starting, you will notice that the program would make all the required uh, prepare preparations and it invokes ML agents and starts the training session uh, using the configuration file and starts the executable that was defined in the interface. You will notice that it starts a small window that is accelerated and allows uh, the model to train in this, uh, in this window, in this environment that is created as defined by the user. If we close this interface, we can also go take a look at the results, which are present in the results folder that have a results folder for every specific training session, which would also contain any checkpoints here. However, there are none because I didn't let it train for long enough. There is also the option to train from uh, a specific session that was uh, that was used before. Uh, the program will keep track of these sessions in its history, and you can use uh, by selecting any of the previous run IDs, you can resume a session. 
Uh, and then there's also the master bean architecture uh, training, which is useful because it allows you to choose multiple executables to train with concurrently. This basically allows the training session to uh, switch between different environments and allow the model to see different uh, situations that are present in different games or different levels. Um, and this is not a feature that was included in ML Agents, but we had to create it ourselves to create the model that we previously mentioned. Finally, since we are offering a product, it's important to have a, a, a deeper look at the business involved in order to understand why our product is beneficial. So if you have a look at Unity, uh, the engine that we're targeting, we can see that its revenue has been constantly increasing from 2018 until now, uh, reaching about 750 million. And the Unity is also uh, has the biggest market share in the mobile games market with over 50% uh, market share. Uh, as for the QA testing, uh, recent statistics have found that uh, approximately uh, testing contributes to 20% of the development costs, which is uh, a very huge number. And this uh, warrants fixing the bugs and detecting them at the earliest in order to try and minimize these costs, which our product is going to be helpful in. Uh, also, in the future, if we do wish to publish our package, then we can easily do so uh, on the Unity Asset Store, which is a store provided to all Unity developers in order to seek out any packages that they might want to implement within their game. Uh, thank you, and uh, please feel free to ask any questions.